Happy Friday, y'all. We're showing up on love's terms. Good evening, Kelly. How are you tonight? So it's sunset. Hi, Rhonda. It's sunset over here, and so the lighting is about to get dark, but usually it seems to show up pretty well here. So keep me posted if the lighting or the, the volume is good or bad, and uh, I will do my best to try to keep it clear. This is probably going to be a short one, but I've been really dying to share what came to me this morning, and it's something I've been working on for a long time for myself. So many of you may relate to this, but maybe you don't recognize the pattern and where it's originating in the whys, because that's what it really boils down to. Hi, Sabine, how are you, how are you doing over there? So, buddy's, buddy's chewing. He's got himself a stick this time, so we're good. That's not such a bad thing. But I think he, okay, hold that thought. I gotta, I gotta do something. Stay. Down. Down. There you go. Good boy. Okay. I'm back. Without further ado. So maybe I'll sit over on the side. I, got, I have a strange setup tonight. So I was really trying to get it just right so that the lighting wouldn't be so bad. Hi, Amanda. How are you? So tonight we're going to talk about love on the heart's terms. And I really thought it was kind of appropriate because I think a lot of us are struggling. I, I know I have some very close friends that are going through some relationship issues. And there's some things that have just come to light based on my own experiences in the past, present, and even all the, the knowledge I've amassed, you know, it's about integrating, about putting into action. What it is we learn, you can't, you can't learn without failure, right? So you have to put things into action. You can have all the theory, you can have all the, the research. Well, this is what the books say, but it, you got to see if it works for you. Same thing with nutrition, same thing with lifestyle, anything and everything applies. So <clears throat> showing up for others the way you want to be shown up to. I've been discussing this. Here's a question. How many of you out there will do acts of kindness and will give gifts of your heart, but only on your terms. This is gonna, this is gonna like, you know, poke and prod some people out there. Cause I know for myself, and I may have said this in the past, I'm sure I've talked about it, that when we give a gift, I talked about it the other day, when you give something with an expectation in return from another person that, you know, I expect a thank you, a, Oh, an exciting, exuberant, I have this idea that this person definitely wants it, but maybe they never said it. Or maybe you were a little off. And then the, that root of suffering is when you hold on, hi Karen, hi Mia, when you hold on to the attachment of what you expect is going to be the outcome. So when you turn around and you're disappointed because the person is not as excited as you thought they would be or as excited as you were to give that gift, right? Or do that act, that act of kindness. What ends up happening is, is it really comes back to, there's also that too. It's oblig obligation is mental, all of that. And so when we do gifts or acts of kindness, whether it's out of obligation or not, there's something in our mind, it's triggered, it's ego. The ego is the one that says, I'm do number one, I'm doing it on my terms because I want to give. So, you know, it looks like you're doing something from the heart but the question is are you doing it from the heart because sometimes we think we know what somebody would like and when we're, we're totally off course we don't have a clue and then when we do it we get upset because we don't get that reciprocal oh thank you so much I really really like this or whatever it is you expect and it could be just the subtle thank you and if you don't get that or like the look of oh thanks has anybody out there experienced this I know I have. And so the reason I'm bringing this up is just because it's, it's kind of, you know, I've seen it a lot in my life and I've been working on it, that sometimes the gift of kindness and the acts of kindness that we do may not be on our own terms, which is all ego-based. 
but on the heart's terms. So for example, how many of you out there will tell your partner, your friends, your besties, whatever you need, anything you can call on me. I'm the person you can turn to. And then how often are you there and available when they say that? Then when you say that, do you walk your talk? Are you truly in alignment and integrity that when that person needs you, you really truly do show up for them? Not all of us do it all of the time. Maybe we do it some of the time. We do the best we can. I'm not saying that you, you aren't there or I haven't been there for someone. <clears throat> the question is whether it was a, I just don't feel like doing this, right? Which is a weak form of the ego saying, I can't be bothered. It's not, I don't want to do it, right? And so I was reflecting upon this because it's head over heart every single time. How often has somebody requested, could you do this for me? That you turn around and said, you know, I really can't. I just don't feel like it. Or you push them away because of whatever. Whatever your excuse. The question I, I am challenging and putting out there for all of us is to ask yourself, what is the real bottom line? Is it such a difficult request that you would rather poo-poo and push away a loving act that someone is requesting of you just out of laziness? Because sometimes it may be no sweat off your back. It could just be the, I just don't feel like it. Which again, it's just a weak ego response. I just don't want to do it. When sometimes what you may find is if you, you know, you kind of go, you know what? I want to see that person happy. I want to help that person. I want to do this for that person. It may take you effort, but you may find that effort not only is an action of love coming from your heart because you desire that person to feel your love, but also you may find it strengthens and unites and bonds you closer to that individual. When you also tap in at the same time you choose, you will do it. I'll give you an example in a second. When you choose to make that action and you come from the heart and you go, you know what, this really, I'm asking you to ask yourself before you do or don't do it, if you are pushing it away, whether it's really you just don't feel like doing it, because you just don't want to do it, which maybe it really is not so difficult. Like, could you put, I, I'm just going to use, um, what would be a good example? On your way home, could you pick up something at the grocery store? And maybe it means you have to stop in your car, right? But it saves that person the trouble of picking something up. Or maybe your friends one of your best friends is having a birthday party and all of a sudden you're like well i really don't feel like going and this is a this is probably the primo that all of us have done right i just don't feel like going i'm tired it's been a long week or day or whatever it's been i just don't feel like going but nine times out of ten when you say you know what i really care about this person it's no sweat off my back if i just put my put in that little bit of effort which most of the times is no sweat off your back and then when you do it, you go, you know, I'm really glad I did that. Because then you get to see the person light up at the request of your showing up in an action of love. A true action coming from the heart. Because, again, this is the reason I asked you to question yourself. Is it because I just don't feel like it? Which could be holding you back from feeling a true loving experience. Because you're going to build upon well see now there's a difference between people pleasing because sometimes that's out of obligation 99% of the time it's the fear of not being liked and you have to tune into all of those dynamics and that's why I'm saying you have to really tap into your mind and ask yourself if it is something that is going to be sweat off your back if you feel that you're giving too much then you're expecting something in return does that ring a bell with you me at all because I know in the past when I would overdo things, overgive, overextend myself, it was usually because I felt obliged, which was a head thing, was the mind, versus, you know what, I can do this from my heart without any attachment. And in those moments when you do that, you should feel ease. There should be no discourse, 
no oh that was so exhausting if it's exhausting then you're putting way too much into it whether it's thinking too much about it which it really that actually let me just leave it there because you're thinking too much whether it's thinking in the direction of you know all these excuses of why you don't want to do it versus just simply two seconds of doing something most of the times people will go so to the extreme of finding excuses and ways to get out of doing things they've just wasted more energy and more time than just boom it was already done have you has anybody experienced that i did in my past i can't do this right now and then i go into the excuses and the stories and it's like Wow, now I can look back and say, you know, if someone asks me to do something and I have, I'm able to do it, that's showing I love them and that it's no sweat off my back and that if I can show up for them the way I would like to be shown up to as well, as opposed to doing things on my own terms. So if, if it's on my own ego terms, well, it's when I want to do it, that's in my head. When it's from my heart, because, you know, maybe I wake up in the morning and say, I'd like to see how I may serve others. Many people say they like to serve others, but they do it on their own terms. What fits into what they feel like doing? And that's again, not feeling, it's in the head. Because it's a control, you know, like I've got control over the situation. It's not that you're doing it from the heart space most of the times. Because then what, what ends up happening, when it comes from the head, that's where the suffering happens. When you're feeling obligated to doing something, that's where the suffering happens. That's where the attachment leads to suffering. Again, we have to question, where is this originating? Why is it so difficult for me to show up for someone I love when they're not really requesting much of me? Now, I'm not talking about like, you know, giving a limb or, or giving a kidney or an organ. And in that case, that's really an act of love, especially if you can do it. It's a matter of showing up outside of the mind, coming from the heart. And sometimes, yeah, we maybe don't want to f want to do it. Maybe we don't feel like doing it. But I can tell you that the reward of doing something, uh, maybe meeting is a good moment to take. You know what? That's beautiful, Mia. So that's a great example. Clearly, your friend is excited for you to meet her new boyfriend. Of course, she probably wants your opinion, wants to get your feel out on it. And that's what we do as friends, right? is we want to be there for our friends. We want to make them feel we support them. And that's just a simple request that may be no sweat off your back. Maybe it's, and you know what? When you can frame your mind into aligning with your heart, going, you know, I really don't feel like going out, but you know, because I love this person, my friend so much, I'm going to be there for them and I'm going to get excited for them and I'm going to come from my heart and I'm truly going to be present for them. And so that's in any relationship that we have. It's so imperative that we remember that as we show up for others, we're giving them to permission to also be inspired to maybe even show up for you. When you might request something and they may not feel like doing it, but they see the effort you put forward, it's again leading by example. We inspire through our own inspired living. There's only one way to do it. You be you but authentically in alignment with your integrity. Yes, there are people who have pushed our boundaries, but that's because we allow that. And most of the times, if people have gone beyond our beyond boundaries and we've created that unhealthy relationship, it's typically because, well, we allowed it and we had an expectation that created the discourse to begin with. When you're attached that people have to act a certain way towards you because of what you do, it's all in the ego mind. It's all an expectation that they're going to show up to you without any sort of communication as to, oh, by the way, didn't you know that you're supposed to know what my mind is expecting you to do in return? And when that happens, everybody's going, well, I don't get it. What's going on here? This doesn't make sense to me. Well, of course, because it was not communicated. And this is about communication in the end. And the more we are able to grow from communicating with clarity and integrity and fluid, loving, hey, you know what? I can do this because I am capable of doing it. And it isn't going to hurt anything or anybody. And I'm able to show my love through my actions because it's easier to see and to feel when someone does something that we know 
we, we asked, and, it, and it's really a giving, a giving and a receiving. Because when you are willing to re- give someone, they're asking something of you, you're also receiving because you'll see the pleasure in the person because it's what they're risk requesting, not on your ego mind's control terms of, well, I want to just give what I want to give because that's all I'm willing to give. Sometimes it's stepping out of the comfort of like trying something new, allowing the person to guide you in the way that they feel loved. Because again, there's the different love languages that we all communicate with, whether it's time, it's communication in, you know, face on face to face. You can say you know somebody, but truly how well do you know yourself? If you know somebody more than what well, what you consider better than yourself, then you're really distracting yourself from really getting to know what how you operate and what goes on inside of your mind. Beautiful sunny day here in Sunshine State of Florida, and it is Harley night. <laughs> Harley Friday. Yay. So it's been an amazing day today. I woke up really, really excited because I had a lot of different little things I was going to be doing. And, you know, there's a little slow movement in it, and that's okay. The most exciting things that happened were just like daily miracles unfolding. I can't tell you that the, the most beautiful thing that happened was that The other day I was thinking how nice it would be to get a second refrigerator for the Love Shack. And I'm not kidding when I tell you that the neighbor across the street put a refrigerator out by the street today, this morning. So as soon as I saw my neighbor, I said, hey, if nobody picks that thing, that refrigerator up, I'll take it off your hand. She looked at me and she said, you can have it, honey. Not only that, but she gave me a bouquet of flowers to go with it. And that was so awesome. I mean, you can't make up this stuff, but that's where life becomes miraculous in every moment when you start being more present, when you truly intention, when you do things from the heart as opposed to getting caught up in the head. I didn't think about the refrigerator for very long, and then when she said I could have it, I was like, okay, cool, this worked out. And then then I went out, a little concerned that the fridge might get picked up because, you know, she explained to me, goes, she goes, you know, it's so funny. People don't pick things up when it says free, but when it says it's you know, put a price tag on it, people will steal it. It's it's a psychology, right? So I went out and I went by one of my favorite um, metaphysical stores where I originally bought my John of God piece, my necklace that I wear quite often. And Digby Bertrand, he was there and I was so excited because I haven't seen him in a while. And I've been wanting and eventually I'm gonna do a collaboration. We're gonna gonna wrap on a live together. I got to spend some time and talk with him and he looks amazing and I was just telling him how how vibrant he looked and he was sharing what he's been doing and and he feels really really good and he noticed the difference in when he's what he's eating and how that's affecting his body and you know he had grown his beard out and I said you just look like a completely different person and I explained to him how when we with all of us men and women we the moon center is our chin a moon, the moon center related to our emotions, right? And so we try to protect or at least cover, especially with men, because they only have one moon center. Women, we have 12 in total, 11 others. And so he had this beautiful beard and it looked amazing. And I said, you know, I, I shared with him about the protection and he said, that makes a lot of sense. And it, he said, I didn't do it on purpose. It was just that I wasn't I was unable to shave and I figured everybody kept telling me how good it looked. I might as well just keep it. And I said, well, it looks very, very good on you. And so he was really radiant and very relaxed. I brought him some bananas and some kombucha. And uh, I have a girlfriend's birthday that I'm going to be spending with tomorrow evening. And same thing, you know, maybe I won't feel like it, but I'm going to show up because I love my girlfriend and I know I'm going to bring some kombucha and a gift and uh, some hopefully some wisdom that if she is open and willing to receive because she's going through some things I'm excited to spend some time with her so then I got home and I was wondering how am I going to get this refrigerator to the back of the house because nobody had a dolly available immediately here's where it gets interesting so my dad and Tom went out for pizza today. I'll just give you that. So that'll give you a slide on into what he goes on talking about at 10 o'clock this evening. So make sure you're paying attention to the business page. 
because I don't know what he's going he's gonna to drop on y'all at 10 p.m. tonight. Um, and that's Eastern Standard Time. So ridiculously authentic. You know where we're at. So they went and had a pizza at a place that I had been two years ago. Um, he'll tell you more about it. But basically, the man, um, the moon centers, not mood centers, but moon centers, Carolyn. Um, I will share more information on that. So, but not in this video tonight because I'm kind of challenged with lighting here shortly. So they went for pizza and they were both comatose when I got home. B Buddy was the only one with all the energy along with myself. And so um, it's, it, yeah, it was, it was quite funny to, to watch. In fact, we're going to have some cute little snippets to share later on. So here's what happened. I'm looking at them. I'm like, hmm, okay. If anybody who, who knows me knows that I will get stuff done. I don't worry about somebody, you know, I'm not going to nag and I'm not going to pick and I'm not going to say, hey, can I get your help? I'll just go and do stuff. And that's just my nature. And it's mostly because, well, I don't know. I've just been single for so long, but also because when I set my mind to do something, I will do it. And so I went out and I started pushing it because I'm like thinking if I leave this out by the curb, I know someone's going to come and take it because they're going to just assume it's up for grabs which it kind of was, it was just hanging out on the edge of my driveway. So I, I shimmied it up behind my dad's truck because he had parked in my parking spot. And eventually I got it out from behind my dad's truck and my dad basically came for the booch too. So he got his kombucha and he left. Then after he left, my neighbor showed up because I was talking with the neighbor who gave me the refrigerator. And I asked if she had a dolly and she said, well, I don't think there is any air in the tires. So that was like, oh man, but her, her partner, her, her man was coming over and she called and he called her like that while we were talking. And so then it turned out he had a dolly and he brought it over and he helped us put the, the refrigerator in the back love shack. And I'm like going, see, you can't make this stuff up. I manifested a refrigerator. I got, I manifested the dolly and we got it in and it just worked out perfectly. And so when you learn to have patience with yourself and others, things will actually move and, and unfold so much quicker. So much quicker and so much at ease. You don't have to feel like you're forcing anything, right? Because a lot of times, isn't that how you feel? You feel like you're having to push and prod and that is, that is not a natural unfolding. There's a resistance when you have to force things. And it's whether it's internal or external, the resistance means that it's not in alignment with your soul. And that's the recognizing and getting aligned with what's going on within yourself, right? So again, it really serves to listen within and do things on your heart's terms, not your head. Because I know I have a strong will, but I've had to soften and have to be patient, not just with myself, but those around me. It's, it's taught me compassion. The compassion I've found with myself and the love that I'm able to extend for others now is just, it's a thousandfold, so much more than I could have ever imagined. I'm able to show up more, I'm more available now than I ever was before. Hi, honey. And so, I'm basically going to end there. I will do another video on moon centers in the future. Um, buddy's just mowing down on a, on, a, on a stick. So I'm going to be walking home in the dark, which is actually pleasant this evening, and I'm very grateful. Um, yeah, things are really just working out perfectly, and you just have to trust and be patient with the process. And I know that a lot of people out there are just saying, that's it, I'm done, I'm not putting up with this, and I'm not putting up with that. But the first most important thing you have to consider is what is it within yourself that is drawing the thing that you claim you don't wanna deal with or put up with? If you're drawing in something you, you are resisting and disliking, the chances are there's something inside of yourself that you're suppressing. And when you're suppressing that in yourself, it's going to show up outside of you to awaken it, to trigger it, to upset you. It's something as simple as you're running late to an appointment and you hit every single stoplight. You can huff and puff or you can stop and breathe. And you have to be mindful in the moment and you have to reflect upon, is this so important to get upset about? Because really we get upset with ourselves 
because we don't have patience and compassion for ourselves. We forget to forgive and to be kind on the mind and just we go into these what I call the crazy monkey mind we beat ourselves up and then everything outside of us reflects that to beat us up even more. So it's really a whole work in progress and it's really tapping into the heart so that you can live on the heart's terms and not the head. It's, it's everyday mindfulness, awareness. Oh, beautiful Mia. We can't make these stories up now, can we? And so I will be, hi Sherry, honey. I'm just wrapping up. I will be speaking more, a little bit more on the moon centers in the future. That might be something for a special um, group of women. And uh, I love you all. I want you to all have an amazing, let it be a very gentle Friday, Friday evening. Allow yourself to be soft on yourself and soft with others. Cuddly, kissy, huggy, complimentary. Just give lots of compliments because you know what? We're all fighting some battles. We've all got some struggles. There's obstacles around us. We think we're hitting brick walls. But the reality is, it's all temporary and this too shall pass. That the more present you are right here, right now, it's even better. It's moon as in the moon because the moon affects our emotions. And so when the moon, right, our emotions, depending on where our moon center is, like for example, if mine's been in my breast the past, it's two and a half day cycles. When it's in your breast, ladies, you're more nurturing, you're more giving, you want to take care of people, right? So that's just one example, but I want you to know I love you all. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for spreading the love. Show up tonight, 10 p.m. You know Tom's going to pull some cray-cray stuff out of the hat. He had his pizza today. Y'all saw he had Arby's last night. Yeah, and maybe one of these days I'll get to share it with you what it is I work with behind the scenes. I bet you're probably curious what I deal with. <laughs> I love you all. Have an amazing evening. What, what? <laughs>